Lil Blood TV back again with another Lil Blood TV exclusive, powered by Taco Media, of course. Today, um, we got one of um, Oakland's very own, um, very influential brother. Um, I ran into this brother at the Empire um, brunch. I think it was last year, and um, I was conversing with him, like, yeah, I got this podcast, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, I'm from Oakland, he's like, yeah, I might have heard of you, Blanche, 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 and um, I'm like, bro, let's do it, so he's like, it's good, when I get some time, I got you, and um, I seen him on you on Instagram, I believe, and I kind of uh, snuck, sneak this thing, no, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> but um, I seen him talking about Oakland, I'm like, man, come on, pull up on me for Oakland, he had hit me, like, it's good, fool, like, it's that's nothing. So, um, introducing the sum and presenting the others, 19 Keys, how you doing, Keys? Man, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to dive right into it. Yeah. Let's get back to the beginning. Let's get back to the to the, to the the uh, childhood. Okay. Oakland. Yeah. Tell me about it. Man, you know, growing up in Oakland, I grew up, uh, well, most people in the Bay Area, they know it's your black Muslim bakery, mm -hmm. right? So, we grew up in a black Muslim setting. But we grew up on 24th Street and Telegraph. Mm -hmm. 24th Street and Telegraph, man, that was uh, it was an interesting spot because my pops, he was basically like the building manager. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So he ran everything there. And it was this old Asian lady named Lynn, I believe. She was the one who owned it at the time. And, you know, it, we had a duality of like going to Elijah's Educational Center uh -huh. right in North Oakland. But then we would go to 24th and Telegraph right afterwards. Right. So you had the Muslim education, then we was back in the streets. Right, right, So right. there, you know, you got the boys and girls, they separated. It's a, a, a Muslim, you know, curriculum, mm -hmm. right, the way it's based. But then when we back out 24th and Telegraph, I'm moving through the streets with my older brother. Right. You understand me? So we get into fights, we get into different little situations. And for all the way up, probably until middle school, that was our life. You understand me? Like being in the streets, learning to teach the honorable Elijah Muhammad, or and no, being at school learning to teach under Elijah Muhammad, then going right back to the streets, streets right? Right, because I was always with my older brother, and he was always moving around, right? Right. You feel me? So growing up in Oakland, though, growing up as a young black Muslim, you know, you remember seeing the motorcade yeah. of black Muslims yeah. moving through the streets of Oakland. Yeah. That's I appreciate it more as an adult now because. There's a lot of black men who ain't never got to see that in their life. Right, right. Right? Like, what it's like to see, you know, 30 black men, they in probably six to seven, eight, nine cars back to back, right? Traveling stopping through traffic. the streets of Oakland like yeah, the president yeah. and stopping traffic and nobody talking to them, nobody messing with them. And then they may just hop out and start drilling. Right, right. Like, I spoke in Sacramento the other day, and the last time I felt like, you know, I, I, my earliest memories out there was when we used to drill like every Saturday. We'd go to Vallejo. Sometimes we'd go to Saks. We'd go all throughout the Oakland hoods, and we'd just pop out. Right. All the brothers had to hop in formation, and then we'd just drill in the hood. Right. You understand me? So, like, Oakland, for me, it's the streets, but then it's the Muslim experience I had. Not to um, cut you off, but I remember I used to go to Marcus Foster. And if I'm not mistaken, right around the corner from Foster, um, it was a Muslim school, too. Mm. Um, Probably Clara Muhammad. Um, I forgot, but th I think it's still there to this day, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Um, but I remember when the brothers came to drill at Foster. Yeah. Um, Yusuf Bay. Yeah. I think he was. Um, he was talking, and he'd say something like "Live peace" or yeah, something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like it was amazing to me, bro. I've like, never seen nothing like that yeah. at the time, and um, I used to tweak because I remember. When I, I can't tell you how long ago it was, but I remember when they was in a paper, and a lot of people from Oakland don't know about this, mm -hmm. but excuse my language, it was really some mob shit going on with them brothers with mm -hmm. that bakery. I remember they was in a paper, and um, I think it was like a um, liquor store. Yeah, I, no, I think it was like the newspaper dude got murdered or something. Oh yeah, 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 Chauncey mm -hmm. Bailey. Chauncey, yeah, I remember that, and um, after that, I remember a lot of brothers just like. Destroying hella liquor stores and shit like that. The liquor store happened before. That was before that. Yeah, I thought it was after. Chauncey Bailey was, you know, that's that's essentially what ended the bakery. Mm, yeah, okay. the liquor store was first. I remember seeing it because you know I knew everybody that was there. Uh -huh. I was in St. Louis at the time and watching it on CNN. I'm like, oh snap! Right, right, right. right. 
And that whole thing was speaking about like the liquor stores in our community that slowly kill us. Right, right. And nobody doing nothing about it. And at the time, the brothers decided that they was going to go in there and they vandalized the liquor store. And right. it was the, 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 the cameras and the tape caught everything. And it had a huge media run all throughout the globe. Right. And so that kind of put, you know, the your black Muslim bakery in a negative light. Right. But you don't you hate I mean? that instead of them... Um, Doing a media run on all the positive shit that the yeah. Black Bakery did for the community, they yeah. take that one little, little thing and just blow that shit up. Well, shit, that's what they do with everything nowadays. Uh -huh. You can be, you can. It, that's what people do. If you live your life correct, ninety percent of your life, you understand me. That ten percent that you do, they gonna magnify that, blow that up, and say that that's your character, mm. right? You don't get credit for your good days, right? People only want to credit you for your bad days. Mm. But I feel like the 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 idea of what they was trying to do when they was talking about the liquor stores was correct. The heart right. was in the right place. Right, right. You know, a person can't argue about the tactics, but we in Oakland though. You know what I mean? Like we praise the Black Panthers. If you've seen the Black Panthers do something like that in the movies, you'd have been like, Yeah, that's what's yeah, up, Black sure. Power. That's because to be honest, you know, a small liquor store vandalism, we know that the Yemen Society, they run the liquor stores in Oakland. Right. And we know that, you know, there's food deserts in Oakland. It's it's one of the, the worst food deserts that you can have. Mm -hmm. Right? But there's liquor stores on every corner. But, you know, that same person have access to be able to buy fruit or something nutritious for their life. They can't get access to that. Do you blame the Yemenis? I don't blame them for the creation of it, but the perpetuation of it as far as their lifestyle is based on our death. Right, you understand right, me? So right. if you cognitive and you conscious of that and you don't care about it, then yeah, you're somewhat to blame as well because you right. participate in it, right? And so the zip codes and throughout, you know, the black neighborhoods, they're designed like death traps. They're designed like deserts. Okay. You understand me? They're not designed for you to thrive and to live. You're not going to, they're not going to have the same opportunity to build those liquor stores in white neighborhoods. Yeah, Why okay. not? Why is it only in the zip codes where it's predominantly melanated black people? Okay. Right? So that's by design. That's not by accident. So if you participate in something that you know is by design, right? The same way if you say, well, I know it's hella liquor stores, but I'm going to open up one anyway because I want to make some money. Yeah. Then you're doing it willfully, intentionally, and knowingly. Right? So if I say, well, do, do, do you find it to be Lil Blood fault? Yeah, well, he said that I'm conscious of what the issue is and I decide to make money off of it. Question. Um, Yemenis, they're Muslim too, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I always wanted to know this, and I'm glad you're here because I think you can explain it better to me. Um, what's the difference between their, their practice of Islam and the NOI practice of Islam? You NOI, right? Yeah. Okay, what's the difference between the practices? So I would say, and to simplify it, right, because you got Sunni, you got Shiite, yeah, Nation of Islam, right, you got Orthodox Muslims. To be honest, based on the Quran, there's no differences between what a Muslim is, mm -hmm. right? A Muslim is a Muslim, one who submits his or her will to do the will of Allah, right? Right. But culturally, where you find the most differences, right? And I think that that's where a lot of people get it confused. The customization of Islam in America was for black people in America, mm -hmm. right? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, through Mass Fawad Muhammad, was the first person who bring and spread Islam throughout America. Okay. The messages before him were mostly black, back to Africa messages, right? Right. But we know that when you do your study, Roots Trait, you go find that a lot of those slaves that, or a lot of the black people that was brought over here and made into slaves. The religion that they practiced before that was Islam, mm -hmm. right? And so we was taught that Islam is a way of life. It's not a religion. And we was taught that, you know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he gained the way of life of original people on the planet Earth, which is what he called Islam. And what he taught to his people because they were living a savage and beast life and he needed something to civilize them, to give them rule, construct, and order. So to answer your question directly, when you come to America and you look at black people in America and our conditions had to be customized to a treatment that was necessary for us to be able to be reformed and redeemed and become respectable again. There has been no program since the founding of the nation of Islam that has been a better redeemer or reformer of black men in America. Mm -hmm. And even all the proponents that was against him at this time, like W.E.B., Du Bois, or anybody that felt like his way of doing it wasn't the right way, none of them argued that particular point. They right. said that we may not like the way he's doing it, but nobody has done it better than him. So the nation of Islam is a, I would say, in the beginning was a 
nation that was customized for the plight of black people in America, right? Utilizing the original science and mathematical way of living on how you condition and civilize a people based on what we needed. Because no Arab prophet would have came over to America to teach the black man in America, right? Right. So, you know, we believe in Allah. We believe in the messenger, right? We believe Masfar Muhammad who came in the person of Allah. And, you know, we believe in holding up those tenets of being a Muslim but more specifically customized for black people in America for our particular issues. What is, um, what are some of the, what are some of the, what are some of the pros and cons of being a black Muslim? Pros and cons, that's a funny question. Um, I say pros, let's start with that man, you know yourself. Like from a baby, being a black Muslim, I could never be surprised about the world. Right. Right? Black man God, white man devil. That was my black and white. You understand me? Of course, it's more nuanced when you think about, you know, reality of it, because there's a lot of black men who can become devils as well. Right. But early on, though, I get to see the world for what it is. I was never confused by reality. I was never confused by racism. Right. Right? Because it's like being taught the nature of a snake. If that snake bites you, that's your fault right. because you know the nature of that snake is to attack once it's triggered, right. right? So I don't hate a snake, but I know how to handle one now because right. I understand its nature. So being a black Muslim in America early, the narratives, the scripts that America run, this matrix that we in, you're taught the script. You're taught the play, right? And so it's like you're given a third eye to see everything for what it is because you were taught the truth about reality and everybody else got, you know, uh, 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 an illusion over their eyes for what they think things going to be, what they hope is going to be. I get to see everything for what it is. Right. Then when you know yourself, it ain't no questioning. You know what I mean? I know I'm a God. I'm going to hold on to that. I ain't got to be nothing else. And, and, and you can't find me a bigger title than God. Right. I don't believe I'm the God that made it all, but I, I come from him. God. You understand me? So... Once you got that, that's like, you know, a person said they're a gangster, or a person said they're a soldier, or a person said they're a warrior, right? These things can have equilateral, you feel me? But in the streets, a lot of times, we only know the gangster and the thug, you understand me? We don't even realize that there's ranks and degrees higher than that, yes, you sir. feel me? You got captains, lieutenants, you got generals, yes, sir. right? Like, and, and once you understand that, it's, it's, it's a point where being a black Muslim, you don't have to graduate from it because it's already felt like this was the highest order. You feel me? So for me, that pro, especially being in the black man in America, doesn't allow you to have confusion on the world that you grow up in, right? To see things for exactly what they are, to know who you are, and then build from that basis. And, you know, cons, I guess, if, if, if you were to throw a con, I don't think I would say it is a con, but in the sense that, you know, you have to be patient for the development of the world that you live in, right? Growing up in Oakland and in St. Louis, the families around us, none of them was Muslim. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you go back to the streets and you're in the neighborhood, like, if you're a black Muslim bakery, a lot of the families that was like Dr. Bay children, they stayed in that compound, mm -hmm. right? But we would go there and we would leave. You understand me? And so we'd be back in the streets. So our reality had a different duality. Uh, you understand uh, me? Uh, yeah. And so it was different. So, but the people that was in our neighborhood, they wasn't Muslim. You understand me? They were stone cold, so got straight from the streets sides. and savage. Yeah. Y'all yeah, got both sides. Of yeah. The and that was every single day. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I never shied away from being outside. You feel me? Because my older brother stayed outside. Right. You feel me? So the, the, the idea of seeing what the world is and knowing that if I really participate in America as a black Muslim man, right, there's no place for me. So you have to carve out your space when you're a black Muslim man. There's no movies made for me. There's no uh, conversations and communication. There's no laws and rights that's trying to be given to the black Muslim masculine man. Right. Because they know that, you know, this is one that can't be controlled. You know what I mean? This is the one that can't be bought. So we don't want you to be like that. We want right. you to be able to sell out. We want you to be able to put on a dress. We want you to be on some sucker shit. We want you to kill your people so we get a two for one. You understand me? And so that black Muslim man, one who knows himself, he know the game. Right. right, but when you know everybody else around, like damn, if Brad just was able to operate at a higher level, you feel me? He'd be solid, and 
Most people, when I grew up, the only thing that they didn't like about being a Muslim was giving up pork <laughs> or white women uh, right. or something like that. You feel me? That was that's, uh, All the brothers that came into Oakland, no matter where they was from, from San Francisco, Vallejo, Richmond, man, it was that pork and white women that right, they couldn't right, give right. up the fastest. Um, yeah. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> they was like, that. I agree with everything else. <laughs> Bruh, that bacon, man, and Becky. <laughs> Becky and Bacon, man. <laughs> uh, explain to me um, the financial liberation movement. Yeah, man. Um, economics is warfare. You understand me? Like that, we started the basis of why you know we in financial bondage the way we is. We live in financial deserts. You don't have nobody in your environment that can give you game on finances. If you're in a food desert, you don't have access to nutrient available foods. If you're in a financial desert, you don't have nobody who can give you a financial education. Right. And so if you call it one of your homies, family members, yo, how do I how do I invest in stocks? Uh, uh, um, how do I create a savings plan? How do I create me a trust? Right. How do I build me a business? Right. Properly. I don't know. How would you go here? Right. This is a desert. I mean, your environment, don't, you don't have access to it. Then if it's not in your environment, you don't see it. Right. So you're not exposed to it. You don't have no experience in it. So without that, though, we like my brother, Wall Street Trappers, talks about, you know, financial trauma. Right. We have a lot of trauma connected to money. Right. Our relationship with money is toxic. Yeah. Right. So then that's connected to our lack of self-worth and self-love and our insecurities. We buy a lot of things just to make us feel better. Right. Right. Because we don't feel like enough already. So going back to that, being a black Muslim, if I'm already a God, there ain't nothing I can buy that make me godlier. You understand me? But if you don't feel like a god and you just a nigga, now I got to put that Gucci on. I got to put that Louis on. I got to put all this on. When I put it on and y'all see me with it on, you know I'm better than you now. Right, right. You feel me? And so once you get financially educated and you get financial liberation, now you have the ability to move free. Right? I'm not doing it based on where I came from. Right? I'm not buying things because I never had things. Right? If I educate every black person in America, it changes the way that we shop. Right. It's going to put industries out of business. If I change, if I educate you on health and how to eat, you're not going to the fast food chains no more. So guess what? If I'm a fast food owner, I wouldn't want you to educate one of my largest consumer bases. Mm. Right. If if we teaching you how to create your own, you know, clothing businesses and luxury businesses and how to value yourself. I'm taking a large consumer base out of the luxury world. Right. right? right. No, nah, if we give you financial education, the banks can't charge you, right, these these predatory loans or they can't hit you with, you know, the uh, overdraft banking fees, right? You're not even keeping your money in the bank no more, right? Like, every time you go and educate a black person, you're stealing away a customer from somebody who's feeding off our ignorance, right? And so that financial liberation looks like, you know, us not looking at Black Wall Street as the most special thing in the world because we right. live it on a daily basis, Right. And even when we think about Black Wall Street, it's a hero's tale that ends, you understand me, in a negative way. So we feel like it can't be done again. When you go to African countries, the sister was telling me in Kenya, man, all I hear is stories about heroes and success. All we hear is about failures. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and, and the things that went wrong. So financial liberation is just that, man. It's giving us the financial intelligence to be able to move to where we can control our own freedoms. Right. Um do you ever feel like like people blocking your blessings? Not blocking your blessings, but you know you preaching this uh, financial literacy and all this and all that. Do you feel like like the government or anything sometimes be working against you? Like, I mean, I, I, I'm sure 100. percent Like, you know, the social media wasn't Excuse made me. shadow banned. Yeah, yes. you, okay. you get shadow banned, you get deplatformed, you get deboosted, you get de-discovered. Meaning that they don't show you, they ain't monetizing. This stuff happens a lot, so I had to learn creatively how to navigate in a world that already knows against me right right so if we intelligent we learn how to play our hand you feel me the hand that we was dealt and then the hand that we can deal ourselves so if i already know that this is the system mm -hmm. i'm not a part of the system i'm against the system and that means i have to learn how to operate independently outside the system and if i learn to use the system at the same time i have to use my godly creative mind to still navigate and get my point across get my success because they're not going to do it for me Right. On our channel, we get millions of views. You know, you would think that we have a ton of sponsors that just reach out on the video right. side. So we said in the beginning stages, let's put our own commercials in there. Right. So with these tools that make it harder for systems of institutions or people, whoever do want to hate on you to be against you. Right. Right. But they there. 
because based on my story, my foundation, what we do in the media, our leadership, our ability to gather tens of thousands of people and bring them into spaces, man, my phone should never stop ringing, right? But they like, nah, that's a black Muslim conscious man. I don't know if, I don't know if we're afraid of that or not. I don't know if our if our white friends go go like that what he's spitting. Right. You feel me? So a lot of times it's black people in positions that are afraid to put you on as well because they don't know how it's gonna reflect on them. Some right. people just February black. <laughs> I heard the fuck out of that. Yeah. So how you deal with these bitches, man? Let's let's drop it in low. Don't act like the calls up <laughs> throwing that pussy at you, brother. <laughs> man, look, I'm from Oakland though. So yeah, exactly. when, when when you're from Oakland, you already used to it though. Yeah. See, this is this is the thing, little blood, man. You know, there's a lot of people who get their charisma, they start, they style, they 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 prominence on social media, mm-hmm. right? I already had it before. With this shit. You understand yeah. me? So it ain't nothing special. I was thinking that on the way here, man, because uh, I'm just looking at places that I used to move through over here when I used to work and stuff like that. And I was thinking like, damn, the women that you had back in the day, you know, a lot of times it's a woman you can afford. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Like, that's, that's the woman you can afford to spend energy, time, money on, right? And until you get to a certain state, you know, if you're from Oakland, Oakland cats don't feel like we had no ceiling. So you go try to knock the baddest one, whether you feel me, she making millions of dollars or nothing. Like the game in Oakland is a little different, but internationally people look at it different. Like I need to find one in my class. Mm-hmm. You understand me? But I was just thinking because I'm like, you know, I'm at this place now and I got a girl. I'm at this place now, which I always felt like I was, but I was probably disillusioned where I can get any woman in the world. No matter she got millions, billions, no matter if she the most famous woman in the world, like, is in me. Right. So she know that I'm rare. So with me being a god, every woman supposed to want me because they see a reflection of something that's different. You understand me? I don't vibrate the same as everybody else, and I don't want to be like everybody else. Right. And at the same time, I'm authentic because of who I am, where I come from, what I've been through. I don't wear it on my sleeve. I don't talk about it every day. But that's what makes me who I am. That's the ingredients. When you see 19 keys, you may hear consciousness. You may hear this, that, and the third. But I feel my experiences. Right. You understand me? I know that, you know, the heart to be able to speak truth comes from being in the streets, comes from being in the ranks as a Muslim and as a soldier. Like, when people talk about them being in the military, that's how I feel, being in the FOI. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You go through the same drills of discipline and ranks. But, yeah, man, you know. When it comes to, you know, whether it's women, whether it's anything, I'm a man like everybody else, and I'm one of the rare ones on this planet Earth, so, you know, billions go tap in. Right. Um, how do you deal with depression? Shit. It's what I ask for. Yeah, I, my philosophy, if you ask for success, you ask for pressure. You understand me? If you ask for success, you ask for pain. Not the whole way, but at some point in time. So it's like, I'm not the person that, ever put my problems on anybody. I'm the person that everybody put their problems on, right? right. In the family, me everybody too. come to me, me forget my problems. I ain't going through nothing, right? I'm not even a human being. You dig? So, you know, the pressure, I use it, I convert it, man. I, I feel like, you know, if you go in the gym and you see the person with the most plates, you feel me, on the weight, that means they the strongest. So the person that can handle the most pressure, that's because God know you the strongest. He wouldn't even give it to you if he know you can't handle it. Life is right. a gym. He like, you know what? I know you can handle more darkness than anybody else. Look, how do I know? Because I gave them the same and they came to you for help. I gave you the same and you went for nobody because you can handle it. Right. So for me, pressure is like God putting responsibility on you because he know your strength. You understand me? And sometimes you can go to the gym with somebody and they don't know their own strength. Or right? you can put a little extra weight on there and they're like, nah, I don't know if I can do it because they so used to doing the same. They're never challenging themselves. Then when they finally try it out, like, oh, shit, I am that kind of strong. Right. Or I can become that strong. I felt like, oh, I could have probably did that if I was more consistent. So for me, pressure is, is the gym, man. It's the gym of life. Uh, high level conversation. Yeah. Let's tweak on that for a minute. What made you start that? What made you tweak on that? Like, oh, man. What was your whole tweak? My whole thing is anytime I see something that, like, I, I create the show I want to be on. You understand me? Like, I've been on The Breakfast Club, been on Drink Chat. I've been on every black platform now just about that I wanted to get on. Right, right. You understand me? But I want to get on one that allowed me to stretch my intellect, right? There's a lot of things I don't get to talk about, different sides of myself that I don't get to express. Same thing with, like, any black man, I feel like, for real. Like, sometimes we get pigeonholed to what people know about us. 
But then we got hella other interests we don't never get to express. And then when we express that, people feel like we being somebody different. That was always me. It was just never a space for me to be that version of myself. And, you know, people care about it. So high level conversations, we live in a world where shit is dominated by low level conversations. We don't talk about nothing but gossip and rumors, mm. right? And most of the media. And mm. so if I look at all of the most successful leaders throughout time, what they have in common, media, all of them control their own newspaper, all of them control their own narratives. You understand me? That they was able to push the messages to their own people. And we live in an age of social media. So if you don't use media to create your own narrative, your own message around your branding, around your business, around your people, then I don't even feel like you're using your phone correctly and using this opportunity of time we in. Right. So right. high level conversations has been successful because it's what's needed. This is the right idea at the right time. So, you know, we be having some powerful, you know, uh, uh, speakers that come on there and people. And I talk to anybody. It's just, you know, I got to make sure that the angles and the elements is right. You right. feel me? Like, we have conversations where we talking for two and a half, sometimes three and a half hours. And that's just natural flow. Right. It ain't no script to it. It's just, I don't interview, I build. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. like, we was taught to have ciphers of gods. Like, yo, we everybody throwing in and we building on top of each other. We not trying to go back and forth and debate with each other. I never liked that culture. So I say, let me create what I always wanted to see. And that's what it is, is high-level conversations. Um, I told you this off camera. I told you this, I think, the last time I seen you are. It was a conversation on the phone. But um, I said, I think you need to come back to Oakland. I think Oakland need more brothers like you. Um, you know, we we come from the Panthers, the Muslim bakery. We got a lot of black culture in Oakland. And it's like, all that left, like everybody left, like there's nobody there anymore. Fab trying to do his shit. You got brothers like me. I try to do as much as I can, but a lot of young brothers ain't going to look at me in that fashion because before you was little blood, nigga, you know what you, you, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what you was doing. Uh, I told you, I think brothers like you, just in general, we need to, because they want to listen to us. Like they definitely want to listen to us, but we don't. We don't got nobody, bro. That's yeah. gonna, you know, come on. This how you should do it. Or come to this seminar and listen to this game. What do you think? Do you think um, it's possible for us to wake the youth up again and just start fucking with them? I see you been coming to the town a lot lately. Is yeah. that something you planning on doing? That 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 was one of my missions this year, man. You know, to do a lot more in Oakland. Like, yeah. so we, we we got some planned in March. You know, but I want to do something big at the same time. Or I want to do something with the local, you know, community leaders and things of that nature. But I want to bring something big to bring the energy back. You right. feel me? Like, I was talking with a Broward member back in Oakland. We used to have a uh, the Black, Black Expo. Black, Black Expo. Black Expo. Like, you know, our- you Remember I, I, the Black Cowboy Parade? Yeah. We ain't anymore. got nothing no more. You yeah. feel me? Like, all of the culture that I feel like made Oakland what it was, is gone. I left Oakland to build myself up. You understand me? Because I, I, I truly believe you have to leave in order to grow. You understand me? To expand. Ever since I left Oakland, I've traveled the world now. So now when I come back to Oakland, I'm more valuable. Right. You understand me? And so it was a lot of people who didn't even know I was from Oakland. Right. Because I wasn't busy trying to create a claim on a territory that I don't own. I was busy building myself. So if right. I come back to that, I could be more valuable and shed light to the people. So, you know, now I got an imperative and a mission to be like, yo, you know, I want to do as many things that I can and be, you know, that hometown hero. Now that I went out there and touched the globe, you right. feel me? So I'm always that person. I want to get more leverage before I do things. Right, right, you feel right. me? Like if I, I had a shop in Oakland downtown. So if like, you know, everybody ain't coming to support that. People right. that knew it was in existence. Right. It's not until you leave people like why you go. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you're there, they don't appreciate why you're there in your trust presence. Me. Yeah, trust you me. feel me? So I plan on doing a lot for Oakland. Because doing a lot for Oakland is more so just me saying doing a lot for myself because I feel attached to Oakland. You feel me? So, like, there's so many different things that I feel like we can build. But, you know, like I said, I grew up in Oakland and St. Louis, and they don't feel the same. What's the difference? The difference, where I grew up, most of the people I grew up with is dead in jail on something I ain't on. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So a lot of people get to go back to their hometown sometime, and they still feel connected to it because of the people that's there. You understand me? The place is not the same. Most of them shut down. It's like you going in and creating something completely new. You're not really reconnecting to what was. Mm. You feel me? So Oakland is like a, it's, a, it's a canvas for me. I get to go there and paint myself back into the picture. Um, I think I heard you say something like um, skills 
are better than degrees, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Explain that to me. Man, degrees ain't really worth nothing no more. Say that. Right? People, <laughs> they, they, they taught us to go to college. Like, my mom yeah. wanted me to go to college so bad. I went for a year. Mm. You know, I caught a case out in Oakland and ended up, you know, getting extradited and coming back here. And I never went back to college after I beat my case. And, you know... What I realized, though, especially where we're at right now, the education system, it failed us. 60% of black wealth goes to paying off college debt. Damn, you understand really? me? Yeah. So, like, yeah. we go to college just to put ourselves in debt. It's a racket. Right. If, if, if college was the necessity, right, then we will see, you know, a lot of black wealth being generated from those institutions and the people that went to college coming back and building up those neighborhoods, right? But- we were sold, and most of the people, they go to college not to nation build, like getting skills in engineering, right? Becoming mathematicians. We go into, you know, a, a psychology or something, or right. African-American studies. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's you don't need no college to go into, right? Uh, 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 for me, psychology nor African-American studies. And now where technology is, you know, you don't even need a degree at all. Right, like you've learned the skill sets that can pay you. Businesses are not hiring based on degrees and what school you went to. They hiring based on what skills you have, what experience right. you have. If you got the skills to build a business, you can start building a business. You got right. the skills to do marketing, somebody will hire you to do that based on your experience. Right? You don't have to go to business for media and communications to start you a podcast and that's make right. it successful. Right. right? So for me, it's the hard skills that you have that's gonna allow you to outlast the changes in the industry. Right. Blockchain comes. A artificial intelligence comes, all things change. What's your skill sets that valuable? Right. That's how you can start calculating your worth, right? Like I can do this. If everything fails, what can I do? Right? Like if you don't have no skill sets whatsoever, whether you can speak, can you get in front of the camera? Do you, you know, can you trade some stocks? Right? Can you can you run options? These are skills that a person can take all around the world and make money. Right. Right. So I'd rather teach a person skills than a degree because that's something that you can have regardless of a job will pay you. Yeah, that's. I I would debate you on that, man. But I'm gonna leave that alone. We'll talk about that on camera. Yeah. Um, I be hearing a lot of brothers say, "We were here before slavery." Yeah. You, I know you done studied a lot more than me. Um, what do you think about that from your studies? Um, from my studies, there's some truth to it. Um, the idea, you know is looking back at the history and who are the true Native Americans. Okay. If we look at the, the Native Americans, the dark Native Americans, the dark melanated Mar Native Americans, they yellow color, mm -hmm. some of the same features, right? If we look at stories of, you know, black men back in the day like John Horse, right, you're going to see connections between, you know, the African brothers and the Native Americans that go back in the relationships that they had. But well, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America, though. Oh. You understand me? He got lost. And then he thought he was in India, so he stopped calling them Indians. Indians yeah. You understand me? But black people were here before Columbus. Right. Right? We were here, you know, in North America before white or Europeans ever came. There's stories of Africans coming and doing trade. Trace, yeah. You understand me? Right. Over here and having right. those yeah. routes, which also means we would have had our own ships. So black sophistication is not really taught on all of the things that we were doing before Europeans were chartering these seas. Right? We already knew how to conquer the seas. Right, right. So... Yeah, if you take that and you look at the genealogy of most black people in America, and I ain't talking about like 23andMe, right, where they find vague traces of like what they call haploid groups in the DNA to say you have similar DNA than Nigerian, so you must be from Nigeria, right? That doesn't really determine where you're from. If I deal genealogy, I'm doing who is your grandparents, your great-grandparents, great-grandparents. I'm taking you all the way back from your tribes and your roots. Right. So if most black people did their genealogy, they're going to find themselves connected to a Native American tribe. Right. If you then do that, that means you come under the same treaties that the Native Americans was under. So they have treaties in America that get them certain grants, you know, to certain wealth and certain land ownership. You understand me? So the Native Americans that are today is a lot of them are five dollar Indians. Back in the day, they was able to pay $5 when they was getting reparations for being an Indian. White people would just sign up as an Indian, pay $5, and they go get reparations as well. Uh, so today, if you see a lot of the Native Americans so carly, what they look, they look white as hell, yeah, right? Sure. How did that happen? The whitewashing right, of the Native Americans when they started off looking like us, yeah, right? $5 Indians? $5 Indians. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, being a... a, a um, you ain't even got to say black man. You can say you a Native American. 
You understand me? Everybody, based on the, the history that's told and based on the math that if you do it, they basically say they don't know how tens of millions of slaves would have came from this transatlantic slave trade yeah. with no evidence of slave ships, right? And so that's where a lot of people first, I believe, find their theories of the slavery that in the history and way it's told is not the truth. Right, right, right. That's deep. Question, what is a fear mindset? A fear mindset is one that's based on your fears. Like, anything you fear becomes your God. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Wow, say that again. Anything, anything you fear, fear becomes, becomes your, your God. God. Right. We, we in the Bay Area. Oh, hard. When you're in the Bay Area, right, There's a uh, there could be a lack mentality, right? There's a lack. It ain't enough space for everybody, right? So that's when people start fighting each other for territory. Like, nah, blah, blah, you can't take over the bay. This, this, I'm in the bay. I'm the, I'm the top dog. And that's a fear of mindset that comes from the thinking is not enough, that there's a lack. We got to be like crabs in a barrel and fight each other. Mm -hmm. When you have an abundance mindset, man, you ain't worried about the next man. There's no insecurity in your game and your movement because you know that you can always generate more and there's enough for everybody. So black people in America, we talk from a fear-based mindset from when we young. We was in slavery. We had black towns that was destroyed. If a black man speaks truth, he get killed. If you become a black leader, you get assassinated. Like, if you go out there and deal with the police, you might get killed. Watch out for the gang. Like, everything is fear-based. Mm -hmm. So he grows up internalized with those ideas. He's not thinking abundantly, I can take over the whole world if I want to. Right. We don't have little Superman characters when we grew up to where you can see yourself on the screen or where you can conquer the world. Right. right? That's why everybody loved Black Panther because... The first one, anyway, it showed a black man in power. And we was like, damn, that's what it'd be like if we had money and in power. We'd right. build our own world. So most of the things that we, the way that we eat, the way that we live, the programming that we receive, it all keeps us in this, in, this, in this cage called fear. And we don't like to live outside of that cage. When we're in the hoods of America, if you don't do the things that people from the hood do, Right? Then you get ostracized. Right. Right? So if you start expanding beyond that, oh man, I got different interests. Right? A person say you catting off, you you lame or you corny or you square or whatever it may be. But the reality of it is you're a human being before you become anything that's connected to a gang, a neighborhood, or any of those things. You're a human being, and human beings have interests. Your society puts a cage on you, or your environment puts a cage on you on who they say you can be. Because they say no. You have to dress like this, talk like this, walk like this, right? You have to be all these things and then protect that, right? And so you may think that shit is gangster, but it's more operated out of fear. Right. That if I change any part of myself, I fear I'm losing myself. I fear I'm going to lose respect and I fear people go judge me, right? It's, it's, it's based on insecurities and insecurity is the root of fear, right? So now we got to be hyper masculizing everything we do because I don't want nobody to see me for who I am because it's fear, right? Right. But if you can show up as who you truly are and it's authentic and we, we live in environments where we ain't judging each other based on this low criteria, then we become completely different human beings, right? And so that fear-based mindset stops us from taking our rightful place on the planet. Like as black men, we powerful as hell. Everybody knows that. Yeah. But they make us fear our own potential. Don't become too powerful because they're going to knock you down, right. right? And so Huey P. Newton said, I would rather create the idea of revolutionary suicide versus reactionary suicide. Reactionary suicide is when a black man dies because of his oppression circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Revolutionary suicide is when a black man dies fighting against those circumstances. Right. One is dying on your knees and one is dying on your feet. Right. You understand me? But one is truly living and one is never known to be free. Right. So we have too much of a fear-based mindset where we don't really want to be ourselves. And when we look around, like everybody else is fearful of being themselves, right? So everybody's projecting that fear on each other. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like, no, nah, we got to learn to give each other exposure. We got to learn that if you believe in God, God, like you can't say I fear God because God is supposed to say, well, if you fear me, do what I say do. Right. Right. And if I you say do what I do, I give you good ideas, execute those ideas. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up, right? Cause this religion shit is kind of getting like getting on my nerves. Right? <laughs> I swear to God. So boom, you got Christians that say, "Oh, follow us." So we we the true religion. Boom, Muslims follow us. We the true religion. You got all these different religions. How do we know which one is true? How do I know I'm not 
worshiping no no idol if I go take my shahada or if I go get baptized? How I know I'm not worshiping no idol god or no false god? I say all of them have a common thread, right? What do they have in common? A higher power. Well, that and the golden rule. Treat people how you want to be treated. Right. You understand me? They all fall on that single tenet. No matter what book you read from, they all have that common thread. Then you have what people throw on top of those threads. You understand me? Sometimes it's Islam, right? Sometimes it's his Christianity, right? But most people don't really learn a religion for the root of what it is. What is it? It's to give a man guide on how to live with spiritual law, rules, and order on a planet that's material. You understand me? So you can know yourself. So as you deal with all of the things in the world, you figure out a way to get guided. I was always taught we can argue religion after we free, mm -hmm. right? I, you, you never go see me arguing with nobody about Christianity, about Buddhism, about the Bhagavad Gita, about whatever the hell you want to believe in and right. follow, because we ain't even free. What slaves look like arguing on a plantation about who's God? Right. They should be focused on the plan to get towards freedom, right? So, well, black people in America, if, if, if you believe in a higher power, you have to know that God wants you to do better than your circumstances right now. So we should all be able to agree that if we look at another people, how come they God gives them prosperity and our God doesn't? Mm. Right. So I, I, I say, you know, the greatest religion is truth. You understand me? If, if if your religion stops you from believing in something that you think is truth is limiting you. Mm. You understand me? And why? That means that some of those tenets have to be built on falsehood. There's a lot of black men in America today to this day. And they're going to do it still. They get white Jesus tatted on them. Mm -hmm. They get the white Jesus chain. You understand me? What does that mean? That means a white man, your God. Mm. I don't care how you slice it, how you put it. That features that you put on there comes from a white family, right? That decided that they want their son to be the image of God. And we worship that to this day, right? So when you know yourself, you understand me? And that's why we teach the black man, we teach you, you are God, right? We are, you know, gods in the house of the most high, right? We're not the God. I didn't create everything on the planet, but I don't need to argue with you about religion. Right. right, because if if I was also taught a good Christian is a good Muslim, mm -hmm. right? If you study the story of Jesus, the way he prayed, he prayed like a Muslim. The way he lived, he lived like a Muslim, right? He prostrated, he did salats, right? He never said he was a Christian. It's a way of life. He never said, I follow this religion. He just showed you how he lived. Right. So that's why I was taught that Islam is a way of life, not a religion, right? If you live, you show me a person that's living good and doing good. That's a Muslim to me, right? Right. right? If, if that person goes their whole life and they living good, not even their whole life, but, you know, the abundance of their life, living good, doing good, helping others, they're following the golden rule of every religion on the planet Earth. Treat people how you want to be treated. You understand me? So you, you can say whatever you want to about how they customize and who they decided, but most of it comes from where we grow up from. Right. Right. If we had a different set of parents, lived in a different country, we would probably be a different religion. What would they have in common to make you a better person? Right. What about every religion that if you was to study that say that actually when I study Christianity or, or, or the Bible. Right. And, and the whole thing about the Bible is I was taught that, you know, it's not that it's wrong, but it's a book that's been tampered with. Yes. Right. Course. And so if you have the consciousness to be able to go into the Bible and filter it for the good that you're going to learn from it, because there's a lot of game in there. So I don't like people that be like, nah, fuck the Bible. It's a lot of knowledge in there. Right. Right. And, and that's some high level game. That's going to give you some of those secrets you can utilize to unlock. But what was it about Christ energy? It was never about religion, right? Like I'm going on my Jesus year this year. You understand me? And that Christ energy is different. That's when you locked into consciousness. That's when right. you always living in that way. He was a revolutionary of anything. Right, right. He was flipping over tables. He was telling yeah, people what they had to do. He was going against everything. So if you consider yourself to be a Christian, then how come you don't live with that Christ energy? Right. If you consider yourself to be a black Muslim, shit, move as Malcolm did. Move as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or Elijah Muhammad. Move like that then. So for me, don't just try to follow it. Become it. Right. Become a living example of it. Right. Uh, I'm glad you brought up Brother Malcolm. Uh, I read his books. I'm a. I'm like, I didn't see every video on YouTube. I like love Malcolm. Like, I think Malcolm was a dope brother. Um you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to. Um, you was on Malcolm's side or Elijah's side? When I grew up in my household, Malcolm X wasn't celebrated. Really? 
Because the way I grew up and the way I learned it was that Malcolm was a traitor. Right. Yeah, that's how they portrayed right? it. Well, the reality of it was, you know, even in the 60s, Malcolm X wasn't liked at the time of his death. Right. Right. Because you have to think, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the reason Nation of Islam there. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the reason why, right? They praised him like he was a god, though. Oh, no, no, not a god, a messenger. Okay. He always said, I'm a messenger of Allah. He never said I was a god. He never said that, but to his followers, the people. In what way? In what way, what? How, that did, they, how did they praise him like a god? They smoked Malcolm. Nah, the FBI smoked Malcolm. That can be debated. It can be. It can be debated. I want for anybody that has a debate, I want you to go look at Dr. Wesley. Dr. Wesley gives you definitive proof on exactly what happened, right? The timeline, the evidences. These things have been studied multiple times throughout history. Malcolm X tried to come back into the nation before he yeah, died. He did. Understand me? He wrote his letters of apology. The FBI. And what he was doing as far as human rights, right. as he was traveling around, he was making America look bad, right? And he had enemies all over, right? right? He had FBI inside his own camp, right? right? And they set up a lot of black men, and, and, and whether the FBI utilized tools inside the nation is a different conversation. Right. But we know that the FBI assassinates all black leaders. Yeah, they do. Right? So there's, 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 there's looking at that and saying that how come... When we talk about Malcolm's death, we don't talk about the government involvement inside of it. You understand me? Malcolm's death overshadowed Elijah Muhammad's legacy at a point in time. See, going through Malcolm don't make you like Malcolm. That's the thing. Right. You can study all. You can study because Malcolm don't have any books. Right. Right. Besides reading the autobiography, autobiography which is missing yeah. thirteen chapters. Right. I read so, a message to the black man. I read all right. that in YA. That's that's the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. If you read and study what Malcolm studied, you can become like Malcolm X. Right. But you can't get there just reading Malcolm X's life. That's what I mean. So when most people want to be like Malcolm, they have to study Elijah Muhammad. Right. Right. So they have to learn those teachings in order to become that way. So it was never, and, and I love Malcolm, right? I study, is he a tourist? He one of the greatest tourists to ever live. I'm a tourist. You understand, myself, right? But it's a far kind of tourist. Yeah. But, you know, I believe that Malcolm X was dealing with elements, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, beyond his scope at the time, right? Donald right. Elijah Muhammad was playing a completely different game at the time. His yeah. was for black people in America. And the heart of Malcolm X, I believe, especially when he was going for human rights, was in the right place, right? But what most people love about Malcolm X is when he was in the nation, mm -hmm. right? Those teachings when he was going and, you know, he was debating the scholars around the world and on the news and the radio. They loved Malcolm when he was in the nation of Islam. Right. And they loved the honorable Elijah Muhammad because he changed their whole family life. He took them from drug dealers and pimps and right. crackheads and heroin addicts, right? And he transformed them into respectable black men and women. So, given that Malcolm was 50 plus years ago, right, my whole thing about Malcolm X is that our dear brother, everybody said they love him, right? But nobody wants to follow and do what Malcolm did. Because they all stuck on Elijah Muhammad. Not at all. his teachings. I, I'm not a You don't follow bro, Elijah Muhammad. The streets don't follow Elijah Muhammad. Right, well, but so what's their excuse not to do what Malcolm did? Well, I say as the far nation as the, of Islam the follows Black Elijah Muslim Muhammad, as, as they should. Yeah, but I, because Mal the honorable Elijah Muhammad was the one who laid the foundation and the blueprint. Yeah, yeah, but I think without Malcolm, it wouldn't have been as big as it is. Well, I mean, that's the wisdom of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right, he made Malcolm his main man because he understood that the way he was breaking down science, arithmetic, mathematics, astronomy, nation building. He, there would be no Dr. Sebi. He broke down the health food sciences. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad had the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X had the great oratory skills and ability to conceptualize information and feed it to the masses. Right. So if you find somebody that's one of your best followers, right, what you go do? You go put them on a rostrum to speak the gospel in your teachings. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right? So he allowed a lot of people to connect with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But that was the key. They were the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Right. right? And so... The the whole idea of it is is that if Malcolm was would have came back to the nation of Islam, we'd have a different reality that we live in. But the streets utilize the excuse of right Malcolm X or what happened fifty years ago and why they not transitioning and showing up like Malcolm X. That's my challenge for people who love Malcolm X, live like him. Mm -hmm. If he walked up today and he seen the way you was living. Are you the person he was preaching against? 
or the person that he was hoping and dreaming for. That's a completely different reality. And the nation of Islam that has been governed and ushered by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is one that he did to where nobody can tell you how to run a nation of black people in America. Right. Right? If without his voice, we have no other voices of that level of prominence and leadership that speaks truth at that level. None in existence. Right? Not at that level. And he's been doing it for 60 plus years without a single scandal. Right. You know how hard that is? Right, right. He's living shit, he's living what he preached. Yeah. He's living what he preached. And I salute, you know, I'm I'm a big Farrakhan fanatic too. Like, um, you know, I fuck with all the brothers, but I just think Malcolm was just dead shady and you know. But so what did Malcolm do exactly? Um, so just from what I hear, I just heard Malcolm exposed that uh Elijah Muhammad was dabbing in pedophilia. So let's let's explore that. First of all, why you think there was never one single legal charge brought up against Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Why the government was in hold on, hold on. Why the government was actively pursuing cases and had informants throughout the nation of Islam? No white media source has ever brought this up. Yeah, because like you said, they they, they he was the messenger. You feel no, me? no, I'm and saying uh, white media. He called right. them devils. They hated yeah, him. They they had him he on jail. On what? Oh, no, 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 no. Who was going they on wasn't. Malcolm they was, was his right hand man. They was right there. Everybody know who his wives are and was uh -huh. to this day. There was none that were underage. Right. Have I you mean, ever actually done the knowledge? Most people know the story. Plus, I'm gonna tell you another thing that most people don't know is the timeline. Mm -hmm. Right. He was kicked out first. Then he brought that up, right? Okay. And he brought it up retaliatory because of something that happened outside his house, right? And so most people don't even know the timeline of things that occurred, right? Right. We hear the stories they passed down, but that's nowhere near the truth right. of reality. But see, we wasn't there, so we don't know. It's right. just what you heard and what I heard. Right, but Only them two know the truth, right? No, nah, a lot of people know the truth of that day. Because there's a lot of people there and there's a lot of documentation, right? All his wives are documented, How right? How many wives did he have? Uh, I don't know exactly. But I know one of his most famous ones was Mother Tanetta, mm -hmm. right? Mother Tanetta is whose son is now is on the executive council of the Nation Islam. Okay. She went all the way out to Mexico and furthered his teachings and came back to America and continued to spread those teachings, right? Her children used to be at your Black Muslim Bakery. Okay. You understand me? I grew up with them. And so... When I look at somebody like Mother Tonetta, I even learned from her her teachings because she used to teach about the 19 Code and the way she breaks down his what, teachings. If you don't mind, what's the 19 Code? The 19 Code is something I believe she discovered in the Holy Quran mm -hmm. where there's a 19 mathematical code where if you wanted to see if the Quran was tampered with, there's certain verses, right, certain surahs that always add up to the number 19, okay. right, in a way that you calculate them, right? And that's where you got 19 keys No, from? it's not. I got 19 keys from Asfar to Muhammad okay. when he was giving a breakdown of the 17 million original people, 2 million Indians, uh -huh. and he said there's 19 million rusty locks. He said there's 19 million well-oiled keys to unlocking those rusty lock mines. But if we go back to, you know, um, the wives, no, nobody ever does their education. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that's mainly the problem is that it's propaganda. It's not truth. If you do your education, you're going to find out who the wives were, what did they end up becoming, you understand me, and why. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, at that particular point in time, what we talking about practice polygamy, right? But that's the truth of the reality, and that's the reason why his enemies never used it against them because they couldn't. Right. Right? And so we tell that story in the hoods of America, but in the hoods of America, it's all gossip. Right. It ain't never no truth. So it's passed down, and there's never no facts and no details. And then we use that as our reason of why not to connect to the best thing that's out there. Right, right, right? right. And so who would that work for better? That'll work for the propaganda that they push out there, right? How can they exalt Malcolm as a hero when well, Malcolm was against America as well? Right? Why? Because they commercializing them. They whitewashing them. They utilizing him to say that, hey, we rock with Malcolm, don't rock with the nation. We rock with Malcolm, don't rock with Farrakhan. And that's vice versa. We rock with Farrakhan, don't rock with Malcolm. No, nobody says that. Minister Farrakhan don't say that. Man, Minister Farrakhan, I'm talking about the last 40 years. I'm not talking about what didn't happen 50 years ago. I'm talking about if you go to any of the last speeches in the decades, Minister Lil Farrakhan is always exalting Malcolm X. He speaks about the reality of what happened during that time. Right. He went against his teacher. Yeah, right. What would happen if you go against your teacher and you run a nation? The nation was never about Malcolm. It was about the liberation of black people in right. America. Right. Right. And so you can't confuse a personality with a movement. 
right? The movement is what matters, right? If, if you make Malcolm your movement, then you can say the movement dies, right? But if you make the teachings, right, and you learning that to become like Malcolm did, which means that he went from a pimp and a drug addict, right, and an ex-felon, and he became one of the greatest orator speakers and leaders that black people know in America, right. then you go say, I want to learn what he learned. That's simple point blank. Right. And you can't learn that without Elijah Muhammad teaching. You can't. And so imagine if he was taught, if his picture was up there, if most people understood that, they would have to go through his teachings. That transformed America, right? But you can learn about Malcolm. You can read his autobiography. You can read his book. But how many people become like Malcolm because of that? How many black men, you know, form organization because of that? You can ask me the same question about Elijah and Farrakhan. I no, I can't I because... Look at the reality. The nation is still alive. Yeah, I wouldn't sure. be 19 Keys if it wasn't for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right? So my legacy is an extension right, of that lineage. But then there you will be no that, Dr. Sebi. There will be no Black Panthers. There wouldn't Panthers. be none of them without Malcolm. Malcolm helped put that to the forefront. Yes, he was a person inside it. Yeah, just, like Ma, just like Muhammad Ali was. Right. Just and like that was Honor Malcolm, baby. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on now. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was still the same one who taught. Uh, Muhammad Ali as well, uh -huh. right? So when you look at the lineage of Honorable Elijah Muhammad is Malcolm, it's all of these different all things. Fair college, so yeah. we talking about the root. You're talking about one of the soldiers. Mm -hmm. You understand me? We talking about somebody who came in after the nation Islam had been built up as well. So when you talk about the teachings, Malcolm X didn't leave any books to where a person can go directly into the teachings of Malcolm X. Yeah, and they burned them all. Who? The, the people. What books? The, people, the books he wrote. I'm pretty sure he wrote books and had notes and journals. I mean, that's easy I'm to say I'm sure. pretty sure, I'm but pretty what sure. books? I'm pretty sure. You wouldn't what? know. That's just like, uh, what's the what's right, the Right, but you, can't, you can't count a book that you never heard of. Because you know they destroyed them. Who? I don't Man, know about none of this. On, I ain't gonna blame it on the nation. Well, because you can't, you can't say, you can't make an accusation without evidence. But right, how you know he didn't truth. write none of this stuff, though, bro? Is what I'm saying. How because you know I don't, I, I don't know, and I don't know if they exist because nobody knows. So therefore, I have to go with what I know. Right, right. And, I, I, and me personally, I know he has something going on. You, Malcolm was an intelligent brother. You assuming sure. that you know he has he 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 wrote books, but you can't read them. Right, right. So I because they burnt that, the evidence. I can assume that a lot of people wrote a lot of things, but if I never hear them and they never get in existence and he never published them while he was living, then they don't exist. That's like saying Prince ain't right, make no music. Like that's No, because we listen to his music. Yeah, and we listen to Malcolm's teachings. Right, but what teachings specifically did you listen to about Malcolm? I don't know. I, I don't know. Can, can I, you name any? I just watch hella interviews. I ain't gonna lie. What it is to watch the what, film on what YouTube. He, who did he always give his credit to? The Honorable Elijah, Elijah Muhammad. Of exactly. course, yes. Even, so, when, even when he was funking with this him, this is gave why him he credit. did not write because he already knew the teachings were there. Nah. What was he gonna write on side if you you you, you probably that's like me. That's like me. I always um, say juvenile four hundred degrees. That helped me. That was like a bible to me. Woo woo woo. Yeah. I always refer to that. But then I do my own music too, and I put out projects that people love and listen to. By me giving Juvenile the credit and being one of my biggest influencers, that doesn't mean that I'm not making my own music. And by Malcolm giving Elijah Muhammad all the credit, that doesn't mean he's not writing his own material. But we don't have him, so we can't conclude yeah, that he did, you're right. right? You talking yeah, about a time, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad kept writing books, right, or, or his last one, Theology of Time was based on his lecture series in the 70s, mm -hmm. right? So he got Our Savior Has Arise. He has Out of Eat to Live, Value 1 and 2, right? He had Message to the Black Man. He has Fall of America, right? He has Theology of Time. He has a, a, a multitude of different books. And in that, if any black man in America, to anybody that listens to this, if they go through those books, they got everything they need, right? And so if I'm Malcolm X, I'm not going to spend my time writing books when I feel like shit, the best books that I can give you. Farrakhan wrote books? Hold on, hold on. Yes. Okay, why he... No, he I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Him. He wrote them later, but I'm going to tell you why. If I'm Malcolm X and I'm alive during that time when these books is fresh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to write a book. I'm going to still tell you to read those books. So if he was going to take his time, I feel like Malcolm would have did it out of necessity that I'm going to write something different than what's already there. So if you're living in that time of Malcolm X... He may have just figured, I don't need to write a book because if any black man asks me, I'm going to reference these books, right? Yeah. So, you know, if, if, then, if he lived long then, enough, then perhaps Khan he would say the same thing. That I don't need to write no books because you can listen to the Elijah Muhammad books or read Elijah He Muhammad still tells books. you to read those books to these days. But 
He wrote those books. He wrote The Secret Relationship of the Jews. He wrote a multitude of other different books, you understand me, that he added during his time. Because remember, he was in leadership longer than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X, right? Mm -hmm. That's He's turning 90 this year, right? And so, you know, the, the leadership and the things that you gain from that long-term success as a leader, the way you think about things, the way you internalize things changes. Right. He didn't come out the gate writing books because why would he do that? When he like, yo, I ain't got enough people that in red mesh to the black man. What I look like making myself so important that I'm going to write a book when the best place to point them is to what's already there. Right? Like to this day, if a black man tell me what's a book to start reading, I'm going to tell him message to the black man. I can't tell him Malcolm X book. And so it, it, it's not even, and, and this is the problem. We worship idols and worship men. The teachings is not the man. That's the truth. Right? That mean it had nothing to do with the man in his flesh. The idea of, of, of Malcolm for a lot of times, it's an idea. Right? It's something that you can look at 50 years later afterwards in this point in time and you connect yourself to the emotions of what happened but the reality of it is is that what can you learn from malcolm after his death right what can you learn from his spirit the way he stood up the way he spoke the way he did what lessons can you learn from the way things transpired we've had so many different murders and deaths throughout the lineage of black america right i'm talking about some people get praised for killing Right. When other people, all of a sudden, it's this exaltation of saying that, nah, we don't rock with the nation. They didn't kill Malcolm X. You had no proof of that. But then you go take a cat that ain't got five bodies in the streets. And the reason he's exalted and respected is because he murdered. We got a very hypocritical reality when we think about the context of what we respect and why and why we would rock with certain things and why we wouldn't rock with others. Right. And so the nation of Islam, by far none, that's not one person. That's not one man. That's not one moment. That is a nation throughout a course of 90 plus years, right. right? Working as an institution to help black people in America while we're having a consistent fight that we're going through on a daily basis. And so if every black person in America said that, you know what? I rock with the nation, regardless of the ignorance on the situation and what I knew happened before I was even alive. I don't know no other people that create attachments to situations before they was living, right? Besides the narrative that you told and why. You're given a narrative around Malcolm's situation. If you just taught about Malcolm X and who he was and you learned from that as a black man, that's different. But I didn't hear this from Muslims. Then creating though. division. I didn't hear this from Muslims, like real Muslims. And but are they it's, scholars? It's, I, it's I listen to scholars. I don't listen to just anybody that got an opinion. I listen to people that actually study it. Listen to yeah. the people that study it. I don't know if they were scholars or not, but they were some sharp ass brothers. And like I said, I didn't. Um, the best scholars I know, bro, that then did them years of, of, of prison time reading and studying and studying, no drugs, no smoke, no influence by the outside world, and them the brothers that I done said and got a lot of game from, bro, and and the shit they they explained to me or the the way they gave me the game, oh no, I just I just look at shit different, like you know, and yeah, but so I mean that's cool. A person can have their feelings and opinion, but at the same time. The Honorable Elijah like, Muhammad. I've never, and his I've never had a conversation with a scholar from school or that. Went to I, when school I say scholar, I'm talking about it's talking about real brothers. Yeah. But I'm saying the way that they go about doing their research, they mm -hmm. do it in a methodology to make sure that they're doing it fact based and truth based. Right. It's not secondhand information. It's investigated. It's researched. It's detailed. It's referenced. Right, right. That's what I mean. Like their process of vetting information. Yeah, the Nation sure. of Islam has a team where they vet information to make sure that it's accurate. You understand me? And it's correct. And so I listen to people that put out non-biased information based on what the truth and the facts are, right? If, if, if you haven't studied, and I'm talking about some people, they've been studying this shit so long, and, and it's unfortunate because Malcolm X is used as a tool of division instead of unity, right? right? Like, why wouldn't we learn from an issue where you know the FBI mm -hmm. and the media is involved, and why don't we use that as a you know, a uh, 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 opportunity to reflect on that and say, let's not make that happen again, but let's continue to build. Have you had a chance to sit down with Farrakhan? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a blessing. Definitely. But yeah, I, 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 like I said, I'm just like any other black Muslim in America that, you know, um, appreciate the legacy of Malcolm X, but I look at every man as a man. Right. You understand me? And, and when I say that, that means that I make mistakes. Malcolm made mistakes. Every right. man makes mistakes. And so when we deify people, we can't see the human in them.
Mm-hmm. Right, we 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 can't ask Malcolm what he would have did different but or how course, he would have changed. You're gonna be biased because you said you grew up knowing. Right, Malcolm but that's was when I was a child, though. But right. I learned everything for myself as I grew up. Did I tell you I, I, I what I believe on Malcolm as far as do I say anything negative towards the brother? No, not you didn't. whatsoever. Because no. as an adult, I got my own mind. Yeah, but if right? I'm growing up to know. The white man the devil, the white man the devil, the white man the devil. I'm going to be fucking biased to the white man. Even though I grow up to have my not own you, mind. Not if you gain an understanding as an adult. That's still going to be in the, the back of my mind, though. As an adult. As an adult, it's still going to be in the back of my mind. Like, I was programmed all my fucking life to know that this nigga's a devil. This motherfucker, this is devil, devil, devil. Okay, I probably got my own understanding, but that's still going to be clicking nah, in my mind. because they didn't just say devil. They taught us what the nature of it was. Right. When you teach the definition of it, based on that time... And what Malcolm did, yes, to the nation of Islam, he was a traitor. I don't think he was. No, by definition. Like, well, I'm not yeah. talking about feeling. I'm talking about by definition. If yeah. if you if a brother if everybody if the, entitled to their own. No, no, opinion. no, no. Listen. Opinion is just like assholes. It's not a it's, it's not an people, opinion, though. It's, it's a some fact. people who gonna believe that what Malcolm did was right. If you are in an organization, uh-huh. and hold on, let's talk why. We and, and the and the messengers say, listen. It's a sensitive subject. Don't speak on the death of Robert Kennedy, mm-hmm. right? Don't speak on that whatsoever. And you gonna say fuck that cracker, nigga? And, this and, is and what hold you on, told hold me. On. But we in the army, though. Okay. This ain't this ain't what everybody want to do. This what this what a soldier does. A soldier say that, bro. I respectfully say that I'm in your ranks. So and then he say, yo, when you get an order, I'm gonna submit to that because you the messenger. And so the messenger give you an opportunity, and he say, listen, don't speak. Otherwise, I got to silence you based on our rules. Right. If you let one man break the rules, he become bigger than the program and right. everybody break it. You can't build no nation but like he that. he knew what type of uh, animal he breeded to Malcolm to be. Now like, listen, he knew it ain't, it was, was. It, it's, it's about discipline when you in the ranks. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're talking right. about a person going rogue. That's completely different. Right. If we know that they're what established. Got, what do you say? The birds came home? The rooster came, rooster came home, home to, so, to the flock right. or whatever. He said some other stuff, but... You know, the, the point of it was the messenger just gave him direct orders. He just said, yes. Right. I'm not. And then he went against it. What does that mean? You got other soldiers in the mosque. Yeah. If he don't listen, then he, what does they, that do they to your like ranks? They don't have to listen. Exactly. Yeah. Because he already gave Malcolm so much leeway to do his thing. Right, right, right. right. Because the nation was never about creating superstars. Right. It was never about And I think that's creating, what Malcolm was. Them lights. It ain't Malcolm. about none of that. Right. Like, that had nothing to do with the liberation of black people. But Elijah it was, created this beast, he didn't, though. Listen, listen. He tried to give him the wisdom at the same time. Yes, he did. I right? give him that. It's like, listen. I'm I'm not doing this because I don't it's not that I don't agree with you, right. but that's not our move to make. Right? We playing chess, you playing checkers right now. Mm. Like it's a completely different game when you run an entire nation. Mm-hmm. The decisions you make is different than the individual soldier. Right? It's completely different. Right. The average person on this planet Earth could not deal with the position of being an honorable Elijah Muhammad or the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan shoots. Not a right. single day. Right. Right? That's complex. That's like being the president for 60 years, 40 years. You got to make decisions to make sure you don't get people killed, right. make sure you don't destroy the nation, make sure all of these different things don't happen. So when you have to, you know, you got a program, people get silenced. If you do something that's out of order, out of the rules, ministers get silenced all the time. Yeah. Regular people, that soldier get silenced um, all the time. Muhammad, didn't he get silenced? To this day. Yeah, it happens to this day all the time. Right. It's a normal action, right? Because it's a military. And so in the military, everybody got followed on rules. And so we say, listen, what they what they give them, if, if you can stay silent within this particular parameters, you can come back. He didn't follow. He set himself up. He was trying to create an opportunity because he loved Malcolm for him to come back. Mm-hmm. Right? That was his, that was like his son. You feel me? Like his own son didn't carry the nation right. He wanted that to be on Malcolm, but when when you see a man, you gotta, you feel me? You gotta, you gotta uh, uh, mold him the right way so that when he is running the nation, he can run it the correct way. Because certain decisions you can't make because you want to. You have to make the decisions that's wise for the people for the longevity. Right. Right. So you may want to do something because you think it's a great innovative idea, but you got to be able to take a step back. You understand me? The the, the general got to move completely different than the soldier. And so at the same time, you don't want all this dissension within the ranks. Then you got white media. Then you playing with politics. That's a completely different game. Right. So for me, it was about looking at, and this is important to look at any movement today, right? It's never about this star that's rising. It's not about that. It's about the movement. 
what do you add to the collective? Right. And everybody that comes through any type of ranks, you have to be humble in order for this thing to grow. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be people that's going to come, that's going to be charismatic, they're going to be great, they're going to feel like they're bigger than the program. That's going to happen in every organization. And what happens when that usually happens, it destroys the organization. Right. You understand me? Because now it creates different branches. Now the order and the rules can't be maintained. Right. And so what was built at the foundation now becomes destroyed. And so we know by looking at the legacy of where we are today, we still having a conversation about the death of Malcolm X. Right, right, right. right? When the reality of it is that every black man just needs to live like him. Right. And we'll be good. Right. But we so stuck on what did happen, what didn't happen, we, we don't know what happened, what we must assume what happened. Right. right. We can't even work together. The only standing army black people have in America is a nation in Islam. Right. You understand so me? So who's, who's after Farrakhan? Oh, man, you know. Who's in line? Oh, uh, no, it's a council. Okay. So there's, there's, there, there can be no one man. You understand me? It's, right. it's a group and it's a council that's going to make decisions for the nation. Um, I think Farrakhan, if you so happen to run across this interview, brother, kids deserve a sit down, man. I don't care if it's five minutes, man. Nah, nah, brother it's kids. fine. You know, I, I, I've learned at this point in time, it's like. But you out here though. You putting on. Yeah, I know. You, you, and you that's, out here. You out here, bro. But you know, I feel like I already got my marching orders. Okay. You understand me? Like the way I grew up is very unique, mm -hmm. right? I grew up at the bakery. I grew up at Muslim temples. I grew up in the streets. You right. understand me? I grew up with a different kind of experience that most Malcolm people don't have. Sense, bro. I'm like, just 19 keys. You in a okay? You 19 keys. I give you that. Yeah. But you know the way you're moving, the way like come on, you you state to state. You're in the ghettos with it. You're not behind no security. You're not behind none of that. You're you know you're face first. You in here. You out here. Right. And that's why God gave me and, the mission He gave me. And I believe gonna, you I'm deserve move to how I move. You know, I would first of all, I would love to sit down with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and if you know a lot puts it on his heart, then that that'll happen. But I've, I've I'm basically made my peace with understanding what my mission is, mm -hmm. into the sense to where if I was to imagine what the conversation would be like with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, right? I can already hear those words, right? So it's like I don't need to search for no validation. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because at one point in time, I felt like I needed to hear some magic words. Uh -huh. I no longer feel like I need to hear that. I know who I am. Right, right, You understand right. me? And so there's there's no magic words to this mission, right? Like, you got to do it because it is you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's some people that become crippled by that, mm -hmm. right? They're waiting for that or they need that. And so they don't find it within themselves to be inspired to do the mission. Mm -hmm. You understand me? They like, no... I need him to tell me what to do. I need this, that, and the third. And I think that Allah just gave me a different type of mission. Right. Well, that's right. it. And I feel like everything, because I could have met him a few times, but plans went wrong. You understand right. me? So it, was, it wasn't it was even him. Like I was supposed to meet him once before and I missed the flight. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, Stuff right. like that. So I just felt like God put those type of situations together on purpose because he knew that, you know, I feel like by delaying that, right, I would learn a lot more. Right. From having that internal conversation and having to develop the consciousness that can think for myself rather than to need right um, a meeting to tell me what's next. Now I can follow that order for myself. Like, all right, I imagine that this is what I should be told what to do based on my position. You understand me? So I move based on, you know, mission, not permission. That's dope. That's dope. Well, man, this was a um, dope conversation, man. Um I'm definitely glad we got to sit down and uh, politic and figure some shit out. Um, we definitely can do it again. Oh, yeah, for me? sure. We got to because um, I'm about to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to come back. I'm I want you to study. And this is there. I'm not I'm not the Malcolm scholar. And I say scholar because I really like referring to people who make it their mission to study this and make sure that they deliver accurate facts. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Dr. Wesley is the brother, if if Dr. Wesley Muhammad, mm -hmm. if you want a reference to who I will go through for information, it would be him. He's very meticulous, right? And he has battled against the greatest out there who are the Malcolm conspirators, mm -hmm. right? But my whole thing is it's a, it's a no division type of thing. It's like if you consider yourself a Muslim, I'm your brother, mm -hmm. right? If you see me as your enemy, I'm your enemy. It's really that simple with me. No matter what color you are, background, faith, religion, ideology, that part don't matter. Mm -hmm. If we got the same mission, vision and values, same ethnic background, you my brother. Right. But if you're in a different type of time, you don't like 19 Key because he wear a crown. You don't like me because I speak like this. You don't like because what I said about Malcolm. That's on you, not me. Right, right, I'm going right. to continue my mission because right. I used to be on dumb stuff. 
right? And I wake up every single day thinking about how I can change the world. Right. You understand me? And I actively work. So a person against that, right, they against themselves. Right. Um, before we go, um, what would your message be to um, that 15, 16-year-old kid watching this interview um, straddling the fence? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he want to do right. But he's also dibbling, dabbling, and wrong. What would your message be? Man, most dangerous thing in the world is to straddle the fence. Mm. I've seen so many people get killed because of that, lose their mind because of that. Straddling the fence is that in-between space. You know what I mean? It, it, it's no more dangerous place than not picking a side, right? You can't be neutral right, in a war. Mm. You have to be on one side or the other. If you completely immersed in the streets, it's safer for you than to have one foot in and one foot out. Right, because sometimes you go think you're sweet and you go get caught slipping, right? But when, because when you fully in it, head is on a swivel. You, you're paranoid. Everybody can be an enemy. You understand me? Your 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 uh, senses are keen. They sharp at all times. But when you got one foot out, you slipping sometimes. You understand me? You trying to make a transition, but you ain't fully made it. Right. Right. And so that's when you get caught up. And so for me, it's about picking a side. Right, if if you're the gangster, you claim who you are. What you afraid of? Right, right. Like when we talk about that fear, right? Like that's where you get to see if you're really a man. Right, it's it's a different type of game there. Right, right. Like when you're afraid of public opinion, so you don't do something, and you're really the gangster you think you are. Mm. Right, do you really got that heart that you say you got? But for me, if if I wasn't taught that I was a god at an early age, right, and I didn't grow up into the development of understanding that I wouldn't be able to move as I move now. Right, and you have to expose yourself to greater environments than you live in. Your environment can limit your purpose, right? It limits your function and your movement and your abilities. Like if you, if there's people around you that don't want to, you know, evolve from their circumstances, and you want to, you got to lead those people because that's part of that process of evolution. It, it it ain't faking. It ain't you know what I mean. I don't want to change. No, it's evolving, mm -hmm. right? And so. Anytime you evolve, you got to let things go, right? And so that's that opportunity to grow. That's that opportunity to build. There's, if you go turn on YouTube, TV, like my whole thing is living the example, being the inspiration, right? Like I come from Oakland. 90% of people that grew up with me as Muslims, they ain't Muslim no more, right? They ain't on it no more. I don't look at them as like people that I know taught me Islam, I didn't seen them do the most hypocritical shit on the planet Earth. Right. But I never looked at a man, right, and 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 found my salvation through him. It was always through myself and what's the truth. So there was times where, you know, I could have completely lost faith in everything. But the way I'm built and the way my belief is built, I always put it to God. I never put it to man. And then I always put it to self. Having extreme ownership and having the ability to conquer those fears within yourself allow you to walk whatever line you want to. You can walk out of any situation, you can walk in any situation. You gotta be able to imagine a greater version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you have the ability to imagine a greater version, that means it's possible. I'm talking about somebody who walk better, who think better, who got money, who in a better relationship, who know how to communicate, know how to speak, who more confident. If you can see that version of yourself, why you ain't living it? Mm -hmm. You understand me? Why hold back your own potential? What's the fear? Right. And a lot of times it's the ingredients of our environment that make us weak, right? So we don't want to give up the thing that's killing us. We'd rather die first. Right, right, right. Sometimes, you know, that's all we know. Yeah. That's all a nigga was programmed to understand. So niggas what do you got to do? Expose yourself to something different. Right. Like we get to program ourselves. Right, right. As a child, I used to go to different places just to program myself just because I know they don't expect a black man to live in this neighborhood to know this or has seen this. Right. So I knew it was literally changing my mind. Like I'm designing myself at this point. Give yourself some exposure. Your environment, you know, is stronger than nature. It can dictate your circumstances. But when you go somewhere and you expose yourself to other things, you start to think differently. Mm -hmm. Now you get new ideas. Now your shit can't go back. There's money everywhere. There's so right. much money everywhere. We live in the greatest opportunity right now, right? So the people that may have taught you, you know, what you into now, think about they didn't have the same opportunities you have now. Right. So if you operating from their place of lack and ignorance and fear, when you 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 live in 2023. You understand me? So like the way you go about life, the way you go about elevating or, or changing the dynamics of the street is first start with educating yourself. Once you know something different, you do something different. 
You operate with a different rhythm, a different spirit. But Once you know something different, you do man, something. Man, look in that mirror yes, and state that you a God, and I promise you, you ain't never gonna let nothing get you down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you have it. Nineteen keys. Um, appreciate you, bro. I appreciate yeah. you sitting up here and shooting the shit with me. Um, po podcast. Um, shout your shit out. Yeah, yeah. High level conversations, high man. Level you tap conversations. into the high level conversations, man, and elevate your thinking and your path and your movement. You know. Um, you find me on, on, on IG, and sure. if you so tap into the things that we got going on, hopefully that it resonate with you. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, I, I want to say just this last thing, because I know that that Malcolm subject is a, it's a touchy subject, right? And it's an interesting one because we feel so connected to Malcolm more than we even connect, I think, to like a Huey P. Newton, mm -hmm. right? Or anybody else. And that's because Malcolm was every black man. You know what I mean? A black man that comes from circumstances, you know, like everybody else that's in the streets, that get caught in trouble and finds a path of redemption, mm -hmm. right? Goes through his hero tale and go through that transformation. And we can see so many paths where we've seen people do good, you know, exalt themselves. And it ends up in the same tale nowadays, black men killing each other or because of ego or because of, you know, uh, um, criminality or whatever it may be. And our goal is to create new narratives. You understand me? Our goal is to be like, damn, if Malcolm was here, what would he rock with? Mm -hmm. Right? Would he rock with me having an issue with another black man? Or he'd be like, nah, bruh, I'm, we good. Like, let's build. Like, that's what I stood for my whole foundation. Don't make my death worth nothing. Yeah. You understand me? The only way you're going to make my death worth something is to do something better. Do what I would have did if I had your opportunity. And so don't say you love Malcolm if you won't live and honor him. Mm -hmm. That's my message to the people. Yes, sir. Appreciate you both. Instagram. Yes, sir. Oh, 19 underscore keys, man. It's a lot of unfortunate fake ones out there. 19 underscore keys. Twitter, you rock with Twitter. Yeah, uh, 19 keys underscore. We on the TikToks. We on the on the YouTubes. You understand me? 19 keys, high level conversation. Your 19keys.com should be up by the time it's air. Oh, last question. Is you still pushing the New World Order thing I seen you was pushing? The Block World Order. Yeah, yeah. So Block World Order is the program where I teach monthly. Uh, weekly, rather. So yeah. we do the coaching. That's where you can get the financial intelligence. We even do a physical fitness class for physical transformation. We teach people the AI, the automation, the blockchain, yeah. right? Business development, content creation, the whole nine. And I be in there myself teaching. I bring okay. in guest teachers and I got... Um, Two people I teach with, Quay and Jay Who, we teach you how to flip land, mm -hmm. how to buy land for a little as fifty dollars and figure out how to right, get these right. de-stressed properties. It's a lot of game out there, man. Yeah, we're gonna um, yeah. send me the link so we can put it in, the, for in sure. this video for sure. Yes, sir. Lil Blood TV, 19 Keys. I appreciate you, bro. This means a lot to me. Salute, dog. I know you're a busy man. You do hella shit. You all over the world. You yes, came right. to sit down with the little blood nigga, man. man and I, I appreciate, appreciate it, man. West Oakland's very young. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slam alaikum. Alaikum salam.